Teen Life podcast where we research teen culture so you can focus on connection. I'm Carly Duke and here for our very special 150th episode, I'm with Caleb and Tobin. Yes. And we've got some fun things planned today because I'm going to go over a little TikTok advice that I saw that just kind of made me laugh. And then we're going to throw out, well, Tobin is going to throw out a question to mm. the podcast. And then mm. finally, we're going to cover some of our top things that we love about teenagers because sometimes it's nice just to be reminded why teenagers are so great because we really do think they're wonderful. But first, I saw this TikTok and especially coming out of several episodes ago, we did a couple of episodes on love and Valentine's Day and gave dating advice. And I saw this advice that said, dating hack. If you have a crush on a guy, just get to know him and it'll go away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, like just the whole idea of it's, I'm sure it's tongue in cheek, but that if you have a crush on someone, when you get to know them, you're going to probably find the things about them that are going to make that crush go away pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Instead of just like sitting there and pining after them for a really long time. So I want to throw that to you, um, especially for maybe teenage relationships. Is some of that more idolized in your head than when you actually get to know the person? I don't know. Yes. To me, it feels pretty sexist, but you know. It whatever. could go either way, Tobin. It did don't get it? Because that's, that's not at all how you, how you portrayed it. So I'm just If you have a crush on saying. a person, get to know them. It'll go away. Okay. Okay. There you go. Yeah. yeah. You're Thank welcome. you, Caleb, for being more yeah. encompassing and including inclusive in this podcast. <laughs> That's what I'm here uh -huh. for. I, I think for I mean, sure. Like, okay, so whenever you get to know somebody, teenagers, also be on the lookout for the red flags. We talked about those: the red, the beige, all the all the flags. Be on the lookout. Okay, don't just don't just let the crush do all the talking. You got to get to know them and evaluate them. You're welcome. I, you know. This this kind of goes back to that ick list that we talked about a couple weeks too. Like, you know, I, I think that there there, there is like they're, they're, obviously we're joking, but there is a real behind this. Like, hey, guess what? Your significant other that you end up with long term, marry, whatever, is not going to be the perfect ideal crush mm -hmm. that you think it's going to be. You're going to have an ick list for your significant other, and it's it, it might some might be larger than others. So, uh, just keep that in mind. But yeah. So um, I, I've always said with young love that everything looks great from the outside looking in and then you start seeing the real picture and you're just like, oh, there's a lot more. But that just speaks to that relationships are tough like, mm -hmm. and they take a lot. So, yeah. yeah they do. Just don't date until you're 30. That's what I always tell people. Because yeah. especially guys, because guys are stupid until they're like 25. So. Yeah, can confirm. I know, I know, look at me now. I'm the one bashing the guys. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah. I'm okay. So speaking of still dumb. <laughs> what? Speaking of dumb things, let's let's ask this question, okay? This because this is gonna get real ridiculous. I think uh, since it is our 150th episode, if you could have 150 of your favorite things, we're gonna do two things. If you could have 150 of one thing, what would it be? And let's start with a food item. I already know my answer, but Carly, Caleb, y'all got one already on top of your head? Nerd clusters. Ooh. Ooh. Those, are, those are legit. I like those a That's lot. Good. I think I could put down 150 nerd clusters. You need to like probably call a dentist and have him on standby then. So <laughs> after 150 of those things. Oh, see, that's why like, I'm like, my favorite food is like chicken parmesan, but 150 chicken par that's too much. Okay. That might kill Nobody you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then I'm thinking, like, You're that for years, <laughs> forever. I'd be set for like literally a year. <laughs> uh, um, so then I'm pivoting. Like, candy's a great answer, but then my brain immediately went to hot dogs. Don't know why. <laughs> Don't know why. <laughs> but I feel like if I pace myself at like four of them a day, yeah. you know, I'd be set for a bit. <clears throat> I don't. I'm not a big candy guy myself but when carly asked me when we talked about this the other day my immediate answer was was reese's like i would mm. specifically reese's eggs if you could give me 150 reese's eggs we are in officially in reese's eggs season which is the best season of the year 
like it drives my wife crazy that's probably one of my ick list things is that every time the Reese's eggs are out if I'm at the store I'm buying at least two packs whether we have 12 of them at home or not because <laughs> yes. it's only it's seasonal like it's yeah. it's you can't get it all year round you can freeze um, the, you can freeze those children. oh I do I'm I do that and I just <laughs> I just buy them every time I see them yeah I I put some in the fridge, put some in the freezer, and I just kind of have a little little rotation. And I'll probably have them till summer usually, which is amazing because I like to ration those That's things awesome. out. So definitely 150 of those. I I'm I've been thinking a lot about that. It's this is not funny per se, but my my youngest nephew was born recently, and they just found out in the last few months he's had a peanut allergy. And I was literally thinking the other day, I was like, I don't think I could survive if one of my kids was allergic to peanuts because I. Like I love Reese's so much. <laughs> so, you just be like, hey, I think that would be the fridge. My sister, my sister, poor. I love my sister, and I feel bad for her because she, even she's like, that's the worst part about this is that I can't have Reese's anymore. Like I, like, I literally have to get rid of everything in the house, and I'm oh. just like, that is really depressing. I'm so sorry. Like I'm, I don't envy that life at all. So, okay, so that's food. What about item? Like any item? What would you have 150 things of? Is that where you would have your chicken parmesan, Caleb? Maybe so. <laughs> see no but like my brain goes like i don't know 150 hundred dollar bills could be cool right i mean that's fifteen thousand <laughs> that's right there cheating <laughs> well <laughs> that's like when you ask a genie for unlimited wishes so yeah um, mine is easy it would be books okay i'd have i'd have a library i'd have 150 books if i didn't have to buy them i'm in yeah Mine is definitely shoes. Mm. Reese's oh, and shoes would not be set. Yeah. Mine would be I would love houses. to have houses? <laughs> I houses, mine. Caleb. Just by houses. The 50 houses. That is, that is yep. more money than. Uh, <laughs> okay, than hold on. We got to unpack like... that. We got to unpack that a little bit. Hold on, hold on. So, are you saying like 150 houses that you could just potentially be at, at any moment? Are you going to like be a like a real estate mogul or like a landlord. like a landlord or what what are you talking to here? Ooh, well, I, my he my brain this right. Through, it, Tobin? It's a combo of all three, right? You know, I'd keep whatever whatever the genie gets me, right? I'd evaluate all okay. 150. I'd be like, "Okay, I want to live this one, this one, this one." Then I'd sell off or rent the rest. Okay. Then I'm set for life. I can get as many books as I want, shoes as I want. You could literally have a house in every state and still have a hundred houses to do whatever you wanted to. Yeah, that's exactly. Wild. See, that's boom. Honestly, okay, I'm. I, I kind of dig that choice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you. I, my my uh, I adult like... brain immediately went to that's a whole lot of cleaning because I'm a broken apparently. But yeah, that's, that's a. <laughs> It's a good See, choice. I had to redeem okay. myself after the hot dog choice. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's fair. That is fair. I would say though, if um, ask this of some teenagers, yeah, it's a, it's a fun question to kind of get to know. Could someone. be dangerous too. That's a well, good but, icebreaker. But, yeah, yeah, it is a good icebreaker. <clears throat> yeah. But right now, another great icebreaker for your small group. <laughs> what are the fifteen things you love about teens? Might not might not be as effective as the first one, but uh, right now, just I don't know. With 150 years, years. episodes, yep. <clears throat> you got it, Caleb. Sorry. <laughs> just gonna compose myself. Got too excited about the houses. Um, <laughs> after 150 episodes of Teen Life, we just wanted to talk about for the reason that we do it. Right? Is because ultimately everything that Teen Life does as an organization, everything this podcast is about all stems out of our love and care and our passion for teens. And so to celebrate 150 episodes, to celebrate the teens that we love to pour into and everything, we just thought it'd be fun to go about like the top 15 things that we love about teenagers. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's something that like I interact with them uh, every day. I did like a clue night this week. It's why my head is buzzed. I did this because I love teenagers right and so i think too to start off like they're funny man they are mm -hmm. <laughs> they are so funny we uh that, i have a sixth grade boy and he's so so funny and every week i go to the sixth or to the middle school boys small group leaders and i'm like what did he ask 
Like, what did he ask this week? Because <laughs> he had, I, I promise, I think he comes up every week and he thinks about it every week of like, what is he going to ask his small group leaders? And it's like, hey, I want to be a scientist. If I ever create new life, you think God will strike me down? Because he's like mm-hmm. infringing upon God's rights, I guess. And I'm like, I- <laughs> His small group leaders handle that one. And I'm like, he's not trying to be funny. A lot of these teenagers, some of them know how funny they are, maybe abuse that. Others are just like effortlessly, man, you're just great. You're fun to be around. Mm -hmm. And going along with that, like this kid also, great example, views views the world through a different lens. (laughs) So do most teenagers, especially like if you're an adult who doesn't interact with teenagers much, or you do, you can see how they expand and even push you to view the world differently. It's really, really cool. And I think along with that, they're just never boring. Mm-mm. Like, I don't know, when you're like, actually, especially if you're with a group of teenagers, mm-hmm. I've just never been, like, they can make fun out of almost anything. Give mm-hmm. them a pack of cards and spoons they can play. We had um, Josh's basketball team over for lunch, I guess, on president's day and they were upstairs with my six-year-old playing this card game for i mean hours hours <laughs> and the la- like it was a silly card game but like the laughter and like they can find anything to entertain themselves with and mm-hmm. they thought it was super fun and the six the six-year-old was in heaven <laughs> for sure but i just think they're never boring mm-hmm. you're always gonna have something to do yeah, and they also realize their voice matters, and that's another. So that's that's our fourth thing is that, uh, in that situation, like like with your son Carly, like they they don't take lightly that they can influence the next generation, but also like that's why like in high school, like you'll start seeing kids speak up more, mm-hmm. and and sometimes it may not be the you know the best time for it, or and they're really passionate about it, but they're finding their voice and they know that what they say, they start realizing like what they are saying is going to impact like the f- the years ahead. So I think that's really cool. That's one of my favorite things about them, that their voices, ma- they figure out their voice matters. Mm-hmm. And along that same line, our fifth thing is, is that every emotion they have is intense and strong. Uh, we kind of talked about this last summer when we, we did our teen stereotypes episodes. So like we'll probably link those so you can kind of go back. And sometimes that is seen as a negative, but really like, we always talk about how as as adults that we wish people would have more passion for things or like we wish our kids were more passionate about stuff. And then when they are, we tell them, Oh, play, wait, stop. That's too mm-hmm. much. Stop. And so yeah. like, let them have the, like those emotions are strong and intense. And, and like I said, sometimes it can get out of hand, but most of the time it's just because they just, they care that much. And I, I love that about them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And our sixth thing <laughs> This is totally a parent thing, but I feel like all the parents listening are going to be like, mm, they're going to nod their head vigorously as they're driving to work, or whatever. They can dress themselves. I never forget whenever my oldest started like being able to get ready in the morning without my like 100% attention and help. And Carly, you're not there yet, probably. So you don't get it. So whenever, whenever my oldest started being able to dress on his own and do his whatever he needed to do without me walking and doing everything for him, mm-hmm. I about shed a tear because it was awesome. <laughs> so now I don't even have to worry about it. Like he he rolls out. The only bad side of this is that it's, you know, it'll be 20 degrees outside and my dummy 15 year old will be in shorts and a hoodie. And it's like, well, I hope you don't, I hope you don't die. You know, it's like, that's, <laughs> cause like they, they really can, like they, they, they take care of themselves. And like some of that is also giving them the freedom to have some expression in what they wear and stuff like that. And so, I mean, like I'm joking, but I'm also not joking. The being, the meal to dress themselves is, is a pretty great mm-hmm. milestone chain, you know, mark for them as well. Yeah. And this goes along like with that, like, I remember I would wear shorts all the time. My mom would be like, Caleb, why are you wearing shorts? I'm like, I don't want to wear pants, right? Because mm-hmm. teens also care deeply. <laughs> they care deeply about whatever it is, whether it's what they're wearing. And it even goes back, I think, to like realizing that their voice matters and then feeling all the emotions intense and strong is that they care so deeply about so many things. And it's been cool, especially just to see this generation, like, right, choose these causes or these things to to latch on to and to care so 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 much about and it's it's so cool and i think it stems from just a lot of different things but to boil it down is just mm-hmm. how much they care about even the people who are closest to them all of that is just it's cool to see 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think for number eight, um, they are surviving and they're thriving in a very complicated phase of life. Mm. I mean, I could, for me personally, I would not want to go back and be a teenager again. There is a lot of stuff that they're trying to figure out. And I think it's easy to forget all the things that they're having to do, but they're doing it. And yeah. honestly, a lot of them are handling it better than I did, or I would if I had to go back, because I would complain 100%. all the time if yeah. I had to go back to high school again. And they're doing it. And I think that's something that we really love about teenagers. Um, and then number nine, too, they stand up for what's right. I feel like this generation of kids cares deeply about, I know we're talking about the things that they're passionate about, but I feel like they care about people. Mm -hmm. They care about how people are treated. They care about equality and freedom. They care about like justice. The yes, the climate, yeah. the world. Mm -hmm. Like they are doing things and are going to change the world in ways that I feel like generations before them are kind of like, that is for another generation. And these kids are standing up and going, no, that's us. And we're actually yeah. going to do something about it. And I just think that is so cool. Yeah. And along that same lines, the number 11th, number, sorry, number 10th we have on here is that they teach us so many things. If we are not, you know, so closed off that we can actually learn from them. Like if we open up our minds to be taught by them, they teach us a lot of things. And so um, that's one thing I do love about our teens as well. And we, we kind of hinted at this earlier. Number 11 is they are leaders, especially for kids younger than them. Mm -hmm. um, my son is a great, does a great job about this. Like I see it daily with how he, how he does this with his little brother, but also with other people that um, in his school and stuff like that. And like Carly, you said, you're seeing it with, with your husband's basketball team and Caleb, I'm sure you're seeing this in your church on a daily basis. And that's, that's really great. And number 12, and then I'll let Caleb finish off the rest of these. Number 12 is probably my favorite. Sometimes. They can be brutally <laughs> honest. If you ever want to know anything about yourself and you want an actual honest, no, like no questions asked answer, ask your teenager like, hey, does this outfit look good on me? Hey, have I gained some weight? Or hey, like, you know, what do you think about this? They're going to tell you. So mm -hmm. be ready. They're going to tell you exactly how it is. And even like like the kids that maybe not aren't as with it on that stuff they still have very brutally honest opinions sometimes it's like a it's like a filter thing i think where like hmm. they haven't learned like yeah. hey if you tell this person that they kind of look big in that color that's gonna make them think <laughs> yeah. about that the rest of their life you probably should be careful about that but then there's sometimes where it's just like you know what like at least i got the answer i needed to, to get for whatever reason so yeah and sometimes they'll tell you without being asked <laughs> Right. And the amount of times I've true. gotten yes. humbled by a teenager <laughs> yeah. in the middle of a lesson or like it just interacting with them is crazy. <laughs> it's just a constant reminder of I'm think I'm young at twenty four years old. I'm not. Right. They'll compared to them, they'll they'll humble me. They'll humble you. Uh, whenever another cool thing about uh, teenagers for number 13 is that they pick up new skills easily um, it's so cool we have a lot of talented youth uh, upstairs like for for us and whenever we do our youth group we have like youth bands and we have like a kid who's learned how to play bass this year and so many things it's cool of like hey man like how can I help I want to do that and then they can pick it up easily and I think as a teenager like there's no better time than now because whenever you get to you know adulthood everything like that it's kind of like well, it's too late to learn a skill even though it's not but you know no no better time than now and the number 14 this is one of my favorite things uh is how quickly they connect to others uh it's it's so funny it's i think of like uh i think it's stepbrothers did we just mm -hmm. become best friends of yep. like yeah oh, you like tacos man me too man let's best friends right and sometimes it's that easy and i understand for some like all people some relationships can be difficult to navigate and stuff like that but i think it's cool just to see for teens especially like even if you're just in proximity and share interests it's like sometimes it's all it takes and just mm -hmm. seeing relationships bloom and i know i see it because you know maybe i have a student who who's visiting and he's on the outside and then week after week i just see how they integrate and become invested and take ownership of what they're doing and that's just because the students are so so awesome the teenagers are so great at forming those connections and then looking out for those people and again well, for the last one yeah 
Sorry about that one. I think I didn't fully like appreciate that about teenagers until I became an adult mm. and was trying to make friends again. And I was yeah. like, hey, yes. hang on a second. This is so difficult. Like mm -hmm. when we got married and moved and we're like, now we have to find couple friends. I was like, wait. I did this so easily as mm -hmm. a teenager, and now yes. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Do I ask for their number? Do we invite them to dinner? Like, it's they're it's, busy. Yes, yes, it is so yes. hard. But man, teenagers make it seem effortless. And I'm not saying that it is easy for every teen, but yeah. I just do think that this stage of life, they can create friends very easily, and they don't they don't overthink it. Right? They, they don't mm -hmm. they don't have they they don't have the learned trauma or like insecurities yet from that kind of stuff. So. um yeah, I, I agree with that completely. And to kind of top it off, the, the last one, I think it, you know, encapsulates almost the rest of this list is the the excitement and passion. And we've touched on it a lot is just for the things that they care about, whether it's the people they're making connections with, the things that they're involved with, uh, the the things that they're sticking up for. They're They're passionate about it. They're excited about it. And to teenagers, like with your generation, keep that excitement, right? Keep that drive mm -hmm. for those things that you care about and, and don't, don't let it fade out. Right. Don't, don't let, don't let overthinking or, or things stomp that out. Keep that excitement and everything. And I hope that, you know, that there's people who are ahead of you who are trying to encourage you on. Don't, don't hopefully get drowned out by all the voices saying you can't cause you can, right. You, you have so much power mm -hmm. where you are now. You don't have to wait until you're older, until you're an adult. You have so much now. Keep that excitement and passion. Use it now and then keep it for whenever you grow up too. It's great. Yeah. It's fun to see. And teens, if you're listening to this list, just know first and foremost that like we we love you. We care about you. Mm -hmm. We're so thankful for the things that you do uh, in your lives. Like You may not have people telling you in your daily life that these are great things about you. Just know that you're, we see you, we hear you, we, and we're thankful for you. Uh, if anyone listening has any other things that like specifically you want to be like, man, I love this about this teen or my teen or, or teens in general, like send them on, like we'll, we'll share them. Like we, we love celebrating teens and that's not yeah. something that I think that happens near enough in the settings that teens are in. So, uh, just remember that we know teens that, that are listening, that you are not a problem to be solved. We want to celebrate you. We want to encourage you and we want to be there for you. If you're listening to this and you like what you heard, go ahead and subscribe to any of the podcast platforms or subscribe on YouTube where we do our video podcast and subscribe to our TikTok. And then again, if you have anything to make to comment or add in, uh, just send a comment below and we would love to share it on the air. So thank you for listening. We'll see you next week.